Now, this is a video I've been looking forward to making for a long time. If you've been with me over the past few months, you'll know that I switched to using an M4 Pro Mac Mini. It's a great Mac, possibly the best Mac I've ever used, but it has one expensive weakness, and that's its storage. The moment you start to add storage onto the Mac Mini, it gets stupidly expensive very quickly. The Apple tax on storage is real enough. Now, I thought I'd found a solution by using SSD enclosures. They're good but they do have drawbacks, the main one being that you need to have them with you to be any use at all. And of course, if you take them out on the road, they're easy to get lost or damaged, and then you're back to square one. Well, there is another solution, and that's get yourself one of these, a NAS. If you're new to the idea of a NAS, it's a network attached storage system, and the beauty of it is you can access it from anywhere at any time. Think of a NAS not so much as a basic storage solution, but more of your own personal cloud backup system. Yes, there is a tiny little upfront cost attached, but you'll quickly pull that back by the savings you'll make on subs to Dropbox, iCloud, Google Drive, Adobe, the list goes on and on. And they'll be costing you a small fortune each month, as I well know. Also, you're in control of your NAS and your data at all times. And NAS is way more secure than any cloud service too. NAS Sync has a built-in security manager, which allows users to store massive amounts of personal data in trusted local devices preventing leakage and surveillance. Like I said, you're in control all of the time. Actually, it's so secure that Ugreen recently won two coveted international awards, so you know for sure your data's safe. The NAS I'm going to show you in this video was sent to me by Ugreen, and it's their DXP 4800 Plus. And you're gonna see me set it up from start to finish and see how simple it is to use for the first time. Maybe like me, you've never used a NAS before, so this will be a hands-on video showing you what it's like to unbox, plug in, and how simple it is to get online and start using. The main use and purpose of my NAS will be to archive all my video projects and B-roll from these videos. The beauty for me is that once I've archived my footage onto the NAS, then I can access it from anywhere. So say I start to edit late one night in the studio here, but want to carry on from home, then I don't need to remember to take drives me anymore. I can just simply reach it remotely and grab the files that I need. Also, if I'm out on location like I was a few weeks ago in London, at the end of the day, I can offload all of that day's shots and NAS and reformat my SD card, knowing that all of that work is saved back in the studio. You could use your NAS as a time capsule to back up your entire Mac or even run full virtual machines on it. These things are really, really versatile. To start with, I'm gonna have the NAS on my desk because I want to use it as my primary storage point. I'll be using a 10 gig port on the back of the NAS to connect it to the 10 gig ethernet port on the M4 Pro Mac Mini to get the best possible speeds out of it. Ugreen sent me these four Western Digital Red Plus four terabyte drives, which are pretty quiet, I believe. So having on my desk shouldn't prove too much of a problem from a noise point of view. In time, I might upgrade to faster enterprise drives, but they tend to be noisier. But even if they are, I'll just move the NAS to somewhere else in the building. And that's the beauty of it being on the network. In the box, you get some instructions, the power brick, a couple of these handy little keys that you use to lock the bays on the NAS, the power cord itself, these thermal pads if you decide to put some more SSD in at a later date, and I'll show you where that goes in just a moment. You also get a pair of Ethernet cables too, and a screwdriver for taking the panel off underneath the NAS, which is where the memory slots are. This thing is really stylish. It's made from anodized aluminium, and it's built like a tank, and it looks great next to the studio display. There's a load of IO2 on the front. You get an SD card slot, a Gen 2 USB-C port, and a Gen 2 USB port, both of which support up to 10 gig transfer speeds. On the back, there's a magnetic dust filter that simply drops into place, an HDMI slot that you could use to stream saved 4K movies from, which effectively turns it into a home theater system as well. You get a 3.2 USB port with speeds of up to five gigs per second and two more USB 2 ports with speeds of up to 480 megs per second. There's a 2.5 gig ethernet port you use to connect your NAS to your network and a 10 gig ethernet port that I'll use to connect the NAS to my Mac mini, as I mentioned. And you also have these two MDME slots that I spoke about as well. It comes with an eight gig SSD pre-install, but of course you can swap that out at any time and even configure it to act as a cache memory to speed things up some more. The processor inside the DXP4800 is an Intel 8505 five core unit. It can reach download speeds of up to 1250 megs per second, which is equivalent to downloading about one terabyte of files in roughly 20 minutes. And it has a maximum storage capacity of a whopping 112 terabytes, which is equivalent to storing 39 million pictures, 117 million one meg files, 
or even 76,000 movies. The drives are simple to install and you don't need any tools. You just push the tab here, pull the bay out, pull open this tab, slot the drive in and pop it back into the NAS. Rinse and repeat on the other bays and you're done. Once they're back in, that's when you use that little key that I showed you to lock them safe. Connect your NAS to the network, but not your Mac just yet, and then power up. The lights start flashing from left to right. As they're doing that, go to Safari and type in find.ugnas.com. That will scan your local network and it'll find your NAS. I left the device name as the default, set up an administrator's name and a password. Then you'll be asked to get a verification code which gets emailed to you. After that, you'll be asked to set up a Ugreen account using the password that you just created. Tick the agree box at the bottom and you're almost done. It'll then configure your NAS and eventually restart it, which in my case took about three or four minutes. Then you'll be welcome to your Ugreen NAS. As I was working through the setup, I was sure to keep notes of my password, username, and Ugreen ID link. That's really important, and we'll get to that in a bit. I pop them into my password keeper on the Mac. Follow through the on-screen wizard, and then set up your volume, select your disks, and RAID type. I went with a RAID 5, which means I'll have three drives of capacity and one for redundancy. So even if I lose a drive, I'll still have a backup. Choose BTR, FAS as your file system, and create your first storage pool and then your disks will be formatted via the pop-up wizard at the bottom of the screen. Create a new shared folder, choose where it'll be stored and who has access. You can always add more users later on. In your Ugreen control panel, go to file service and enable SMB and make sure to apply it. I forgot that the first time through. At that point, I connected my NAS to the Mac via that 10 gig ethernet port. Open a finder window and under network, click on the DXP4800 and then click on connect in the top right corner of that window. Enter the username and password you create if you're NAS and that's it, you're done. I set my Mac to show the personal folder on my desktop and then it's pretty much a case of drag and drop. The first folder I put on there was a 14 and a half gig folder which was sitting on an external SSD on my Mac and that transfer took 57 seconds. 57 seconds. If I tried to upload that to Dropbox or iCloud, not only would have it taken forever, but the network would have slowed down to a crawl while I was uploading. So then I thought I'd try another test, uploading this video file, which is just over seven gigs to both the DXP4800 Plus and also to Dropbox. Dropping onto Dropbox first, I think you get an estimated time in the bottom of the screen, half an hour. And if I now upload that same file onto the NAS, and let's see how much quicker that is. And don't forget, this isn't uploading locally to the desktop. This is uploading onto the NAS. And as you can see, we are complete there at 2 minutes 24. And we've still got 22 minutes to go on Dropbox. So I think you can say that uh, working and uploading onto a NAS is a lot quicker than Dropbox. At the bottom of the setup screen, click on remote access. There you'll find the addresses you'll need to access your NAS from anywhere, which I kept a note of in my password app. I also downloaded the Ugreen NAS app to my iPhone 16e, 16 Pro Max, and to my iPad mini and iPad Pro. Log in with the existing account option and enter your unique Ugreen link, username and password, and then you can access your files from your phones and iPads. From another Mac, you can access your NAS by typing in ug.link forward slash and then the rest of your personal Ugreen link. For speed, I've saved that Ugreen portal to my favorites on Safari for real quick access. Now, I've had the NAS for about two days. It's been running for two days straight now and it's quiet. It is super quiet. The only time you hear a slight ticking noise is when you're uploading files to it. I've already added my video archive from this year to the NAS and a few photos as well. In the control center for your NAS, there's an app center, which is where I found the photos app. Although I won't use it that much, I'm not a massive AI user. This NAS is AI ready. And with your photos, it'll recognize pets, people, food, cars, and even text in your photos. I think the main use for me might be finding particular bits of B-roll without having to search it manually. We all get lazy or blasé about backing up. It'll never happen to me, right? But if you've ever lost a project or files, you'll know the pain that brings. My most important files are also back up offsite too, but this NAS has made things so much simpler. It really has, it's made it so much simpler for me already. World Backup Day is just around the corner. This year it's on the 31st of March. So this is a great time to start looking at your backup solutions before it's too late.
I'd heard all sorts of horror stories about how hard it was to set an ass up. And while that may be the case for others, this 4800 DXP from Ugreen was a cinch. You've just seen it. It has to be the most beginner friendly NAS out there. The reason I bought my Mac Mini with a 10 gig Ethernet port all those months ago was because I kind of knew I wanted eventually to go the NAS route. And now already I'm glad I did. If you fancy picking one of these up for yourself, you'll find a unique link in the description, which I've also left on the screen. And for a limited period, Ugreen have really kindly offered a 20% discount too. Honestly, this NAS has taken things to the next level for me, and I reckon it will do the same for you too. Let me know in the comments how you plan to use your NAS, and I'd love to know what your backup protocol is too.